Are you tired of being called a lid on FT8? Well, I know I was, and so I did a little research and I found three things I believe are critical in ensuring you are less of a lid on FT8 while optimizing the probability to make contacts. More contacts, less lid. I love it, let's get started. Our first tip today while operating FT8, I'm assuming you have everything already set up, you've operated FT8 in the past, but maybe you're sitting here listening to 20 meters and you notice you're not hearing any stations. There's a good probability that your time sync is off. And utilizing a program like JT Sync will allow you to sync with online NTP pools or if you are hearing stations to, stink, to sync with those stations that you might be hearing. And modes like FT8 will allow for a plus or minus one second differential in time. So it's no wonder I'm not seeing any stations if I'm on a two second differential at time. Very clearly what I could do here is I can click on the clock icon with a little earth in front of it, which will then give me a program that looks like this and I can click on the get button to sync my time with google.com. As we could see, I was 2.3 seconds off, much, much higher than the tolerance of one second that WSJTX and FT8 in particular allow. Now watch what happens after I set my clock. And just like that, I'm starting to see stations. We can see it within JT Sync, which is a great program to use. I'll link it below. And we could see it within our WSJTX software. Now, if I wanted to go further, I can calculate the time of all the stations I'm hearing to maybe even be a little bit more precise, at least with the station. Now, if you were to ask me, I would tell you that it's probably important to check your time sync at least once a day. And now that I know time is important, I'm already feeling less of a lid. Let's sink into the next tip. That was pretty corny. <laughs> My next two tips are going to involve utilizing the wide graph. When I got started into FT8 and digital modes, I'll be honest to admit that I wasn't one who quite understood the wide graphs. And this is probably where I became the biggest lid. So the first of the two tips involving this chart happened to do with where you're positioning yourself. Now, if you look at this chart and you look at all the signals that are being generated, what you will see is you will see that they should be roughly 50 Hertz wide. And if we look at this chart even further, 50, excuse me, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, guess what? We should be able to fit two of those signals within a 100 hertz range. So for example, why would you have your station at 467 hertz when you could go down to 450 or up to 500? And by doing this in 50 hertz increments, we're allowing ourselves to have the maximum band, band plan possible. And let me tell you, it does become a pain in the ass when you're trying to find somewhere to operate and this guy's at 510 hertz and this guy's at 465 hertz and this guy, there's not enough room in that little window to get my 50 hertz. So just remember, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700, 750, and so on. Right now, as you can see, I'm setting my listening and my transmitting to 1050 hertz. It looks pretty good and it doesn't look like I'll be interfering with anybody. And that's the third tip. My third point on how not to be a lid on FT8 also might lead to a fourth point, but it's to stop operating over people. If you see a station, no matter how weak, and you see an open spot in this wide graph, pick the open spot. I don't wanna just go right here because there's only a little bit of somebody trying to communicate. In fact, that might make it harder for me to hear who I'm trying to receive, as well as I have to transmit over the station who's right there in my same little band plan. I've made the observation personally that if I'm operating on an open part of the band, I tend to make more contacts. And that is probably a really good reason why people are calling us lids, is modes like FT8 sometimes don't promote good practices, at least the experiences that I've had. And like I say, I give you these three suggestions today because, well... Sometimes even now I continue to do them as well. In the past 15 to 20 minutes that I've been making this video, I've went from not being able to hear any stations to now hearing quite a few stations around the world. I've taken those and I've found an available frequency within the FT8 range that I'll be operating on. Finding that open frequency allows me to maximize my contacts by avoiding interference, by not transmitting on a channel where another station is transmitting. And by channel, I guess I should probably say frequency. It allows for better signal decoding. When there's a very weak signal, maybe a rare DX station, and somebody's transmitting over that, you're more than likely going to hear the loud transmitting station that's stronger than that weak signal. It encourages polite operating practice, which I think that sometimes in digital modes goes out the window. And again, I say these things because I've been there and I'm guilty of them. 
And finally, we maximize our opportunity for context by doing all three or four of those things. I hope this episode helped you. If it did, consider sharing this out to a friend. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching the channel. 73. If you did enjoy these three tips on how not to be a lid on FT8, or maybe you thought that I could have given you three better tips on how not to be a lid on FT8, I encourage you to subscribe where I'll have another video in the future, hopefully with better audio quality, addressing part two on how not to be a lid on FT8. Thanks for watching, 73.